Shortly after midnight on June 5th, 1968, Senator Robert F. Kennedy took to the stage at the Ambassador Hotel here in Los Angeles to declare victory in California's presidential primary. But the celebration would end in tragedy as aides led Senator Kennedy through the hotel's kitchen to the press area. Gunman Sirhan Sirhan stepped out from his hiding place and opened fire. Kennedy did not survive and neither would the Ambassador Hotel Hotel. The assassination contributed to the slow decline of the historic property. The hotel closed in 1989 and was demolished in 2005. Pat Morrison asks, did we lose a crucial piece of history when we lost the ambassador? Here's what Pat says. Every year, like a following wind, some heroic or horrific event of our past slips from memory into history. And so the value of preserving the places where they really happen grows that much greater, from a Gettysburg battlefield to a Palo Alto garage that's the cradle of Silicon Valley. In June of 1968, Los Angeles Ambassador Hotel joined the sorry list of places where political assassinations changed the nation's trajectory. <laughs> But a lot of the other sites are still standing and welcoming and teaching people their mute lessons. At Ford's Theater in Washington, where Abraham Lincoln was murdered, Americans can share the space with the ghostly assassin and victim. At Dealey Plaza in Dallas, where President John F. Kennedy was killed, there's a museum on the sixth floor of the building where the assassin made his sniper's nest. And the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, where Martin Luther King Jr. was shot to death, is a shrine and a national civil rights museum. The slogan there is the power of place. The power of place, the actual place, not CG, not virtual reality, not a photograph. The place with only the thin veil of time between you and that moment. But you won't find that in LA where Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated in 1968, two months after Martin Luther King Jr. at the moment of political triumph. The Ambassador Hotel was already marbled with history. Winston Churchill and Nikita Khrushchev stayed there. On its grounds, Richard Nixon wrote his checkers speech, the one about his kid's little dog and his wife's cloth coat. The Coconut Grove was the swankiest nightclub west of the Hudson River. And in the hotel's pantry, Kennedy was fatally shot. That you cannot today visit that place is due to many things, among them the Kennedy family, which wanted all traces obliterated, and so they were. There's a school there now to RFK's memory, but a memorial is different from the actual X marks the spot. Less raw, less ugly, but less evocative and authentic. The argument was that the pantry where Kennedy was shot had gotten too ratty, had changed too much to bother saving. But its very shabbiness told a story, a mundane place to be the site of what a Kennedy friend called the great perhaps of history. And so, except for a couple of dozen bits and pieces shrink-wrapped and left in some LAUSD storage space, the pantry, along with the Ambassador Hotel, ended up in a landfill like some derelict mini-mall buried under a forgetful city's moldy table scraps and frayed lamp cords. Years ago, while the battle over the fate of the pantry was being fought, there was a fire up at Universal Studios. Luckily, they saved the clock tower from the Back to the Future set. What a loss to fake history that would have been. A mural of Robert F. Kennedy is prominently featured in the library of the school, along with this quote, few will have the greatness to bend history, but each of us can work to change a small portion of the events. And in the total, all of these acts will be written in the history of this generation. Up next, we'll look back at another day in history. LA Times Today will continue right after this.